Hello and welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. People in Hong Kong rang in the New Year on Tuesday with a tradition that's a little harder to enjoy in the mainland. That is protesting, and specifically protesting their chief executive Liang Chunying, also known as C Y Liang. Now. Liang was elected last year, and he's been a controversial figure since then. But it's not just about his personal unpopularity, and there are actually two protests on New Year's Day: one pro Liang and one against him. Here today to talk about those protests and what they mean for Hong Kong's future, we have Matt Ganesa and Karen Chang. So, what were those protests about, Karen? Well, like you said, Shelley, the protesters were mostly directed at Liang Chunying, specifically asking him to step down. Now, there's been a recent development、um, against Liang that has basically called into question his integrity, and that's. Around the issue of illegal structures that he had in his home. Now, this particular issue came up during the elections during July, and、uh, it was actually a, a matter that Liang used to attack his opponent, Henry Tang, and he was actually not selected af- afterwards. And Liang Chunying had actually、um, first. Denied that he knew about the illegal structures, but in December he came out and said he was sorry and he knew that they were illegal. And basically, this got a lot of people angry and calling into question whether he was trustworthy. And the protest on、uh, on Tuesday was basically for him to step down.、And、I think there's sort of a, a number of issues related to that too. I mean, he he built stuff in his home. We built extensions to his home and didn't you know file for the permits, didn't pay the proper taxes, but it kind of like. The way that he did it brought up so many different issues. Like there's the you know skyrocketing property values and people can't you know find apartments or homes in Hong Kong. Kind of brought that up. Brought up the issue, of course, as you mentioned, the integrity and in the elections,、uh, and also I think it just kind of this general idea of the wealthy being able to kind of get around. The law and, and and hiding their way through it. And Liu Chunying made it worse because he was actually a property surveyor、uh, before he was elected, so he should have known, you know, what he was. Doing. Yeah, I probably should have known. So is the issue just Liu's illegal building additions to his、uh, property, or is there something else going on here? I think people generally don't like him.、Uh, not everybody, of course, but a lot of Hong Kongers don't like him,、uh, largely because they feel he's too pro Beijing, that is, too pro Communist Party,、uh, and is kind of. Generally,、uh, willing to infringe on the the rights of Hong Kong people. During the election,、um, there was issues being brought up that he may have been an underground Communist Party member. Leung has denied that, but that kind of stuck with him. And a lot of people were also complaining about how he was elected. Hong Kong was promised to have universal suffrage back when it was handed back to、uh, China in 1997, but the Chinese regime kept pushing that back. And Leung was basically elected by like 687 people back in July. And people were saying he does not represent the interests of the general public in Hong Kong. Well, I mean, it makes sense. Because the Hong Kong, the way the election works, it's not just like the people vote directly for him, right? So there's half the votes are from essentially special interest groups, and roughly half are from the people. So even if the majority of people don't want him, if all the special interest groups do, which basically they did, then he gets elected. So it represents yes, the special interest groups, a lot of businesses and so on, which are mostly pro Beijing, but not necessarily the people. And that's just probably a reflection of the way that Hong Kong's election system works. So that's also why Liang survived a no-confidence vote last month because the special interest groups basically kept him in.、Um, is there kind of a connection between this particular、uh, protest and the protests we saw over the summer over Hong Kong's national education curriculum? I think there is. Basically, it's. Just a furthering of the call against the Chinese Communist Party trying to exert influence into Hong Kong. Now that national education plan, a lot of people saw it as a move to brainwash、uh, Hong Kong kids to basically glorify the Chinese regime and attack other、um, political systems. And in this particular one, people were bringing up the fact that you know they don't they are proud. Hong Kong niece instead of a Chinese person. So this that distinction is becoming、um, clearer in the minds of Hong Kong people. So one of the issues that came up uh, in uh, over the summer with those national education curriculums and、um, was the issue of you know Hong Kong's civil liberties being encroached on. People felt that you know the if you're teaching this kind of version of history,、um, you know you would lose some of the things that people in Hong Kong really want to talk about, like、uh, Tiananmen Square massacre, things like that. Are there further signs that Hong Kong's civil liberties are being eroded? Is that one of the issues in this?、Uh, Regular protests. Well, I think there's constant signs of that. I mean, remember back in '97、uh, w- when the handover from British rule took place,、uh, Beijing basically promised "wu shun yan bu bian," right? Fifty years, no change. That is, for 50 years they weren't going to change the political system. 
but within just five years, they started to try to implement changes. And so Hong Kongers are saying, you know, that everything that, that you know, Beijing does to try to bring Hong Kong politically more towards the you know, communist system, Hong Kong is like, whoa, you know, hold up, we, we don't want this. And so it's manifested with the national education curriculum. Uh, I mean, partly this whole thing against C.Y. Leung is, is not just his, the way he handled the construction in his house. It's also just like, this is also a way to kind of show that they don't like him or to sort of get rid of him or to um, basically talk about how he's a bad guy. And they, they can use this as an excuse because he did something illegal. But there's a whole host of other issues that aren't technically illegal that Hong Kongers don't like. Yeah, I think the main thing Hong Kong people want to protect is the civil liberties that they have. During the protests, you saw people waving the British flag around. Now, um, you know, that's basically saying, you know, remember the good old times that we had the freedom to protest, we had the freedom, uh, a free oppress, things like that. So uh, you said when they had the right to protest, but they're protesting now. Is there, are we really seeing something that could, you know, infringe to that level where people in Hong Kong won't be able to have like the freedom of assembly, things like that anymore? Well, there were reports about um, protesters saying police were purposefully trying to block where they were trying to go. So, and Hong Kong people have been reporting more and more about what police are doing to basically restrict what protesters can do. And that is something they fear in the future that's going to become worse. So what about the pro Leung protests that happened earlier in the This is actually quite interesting. If you read about it in the New York Times, it looks like, oh, there's you know, one group that's for Leung and one group that's against. But the reality is that the group that's for Leung actually uh, isn't just, you know, it's not just, oh, there's two groups with, with different, you know, equally legitimate views. Uh, the group that's for Leung actually, uh, we found out later, a lot of those people were actually getting paid uh, 250 Hong Kong dollars, it's about 30 bucks to be involved in those protests. And you can actually look at this video uh, of uh, someone actually receiving a payment for being involved in those protests. So what does it say that people who are pro Leung have to be paid to participate in those protests? And even, even so, those protests were, uh, that were for Leung were only about a third of the size of the ones that were against Leung. It's so almost 10 years ago, there was uh, the issue of Article 23, which, uh, you know, the Hong Kong government tried to pass like laws that would restrict freedom of speech in a lot of ways for Hong Kong. Now, the government ended up backing down because of mass protests over that issue. You know, is are we seeing kind of like a second wave here? Is this kind of a, you know, are we seeing uh, civil liberties being threatened to the same extent? Are we going to see the people, you know, resisting and therefore the government backing down? Or do you think this is something that the, the government is just going to escalate? Well, those protests against Article 23 almost 10 years ago, there are half a million people took to the streets. The protests that are happening, uh, that happened on New Year's and also that happened last summer related to the national education curriculum, were not as big in terms of the numbers. Um, but uh, also, the, the national education curriculum wasn't as directly threatening as Article 23 basically said that, you know, if it had passed, it would have allowed police to basically go in and search people's homes without a warrant just on suspicion. I mean, it was very, very dangerous for Hong Kong people. I think now there's not quite as much direct threat, so you're not seeing quite the numbers. But there, because you see so many Hong Kong people constantly coming out to protest what the Hong Kong uh, government is doing, it does show that there's still a lot of undercurrent of dissatisfaction uh, and anger towards the Hong Kong government. And I think what we didn't have 10 years ago was this flourish of social media. Um, even though not as many people are protesting, there's, you know, social media pages on like Facebook setting up, <clears throat> set up to, to call for Lung Chuyen to step down. So while people aren't physically appearing on the streets, these kind of sentiment are being um, passed around online. And interestingly, if, you know, people in mainland China, especially if they can get around the censorship, are also uh, more easily able to access information about what's happening in Hong Kong. So in terms of the numbers of protesters, it's smaller now, uh, at least for these particular ones. But in terms of the impact of them, it could be much, much bigger because the influence is now able to spill over to China, mainland China, much more easily. So do you think that means the Hong Kong government is going to back down? Or is it going to kind of try to slowly escalate in a more subtle way than with Article 23? Well, they may have to back down uh, on certain issues. I mean, they certainly backed down on the national education curriculum last summer. Um, but you know, I don't. I'm sure that C. Y. Leung is is going to stay in office for a little while, despite the protests. You know, every time Hong Kong backs down, it also causes 
a ripple effect in mainland China where people, you know, have these ideas that they could be bolder. Uh, but uh, Hong Kong also, the government sometimes has to step down because the protests are just too strong. So it's always kind of a, a balancing game. So we're not going to see this change anytime soon? I don't think so. It's interesting enough, um, people are drawing parallels to the protests now, what's going to happen to Xi Wai Leung, back to what happened to uh, Dong Jihua, the first chief executive of Hong Kong. Now, he was forced to step down before his term finished. Um, people were wondering whether it's going to happen to Xi Wai Leung in this particular case as well. Um, but what I was reading was, um, basically, it's not really up to him. It's whether the, uh, the communist regime in Beijing will allow him to step down. Uh, interesting enough, Xinhua News Agency actually published uh, reported about the protest on Tuesday and they actually mentioned that people were calling for him to step down and some people were reading a bit into that saying maybe they're trying to hint at something that they may not be fully supportive of what Siwa Leung was doing. Okay, so he could end up being the scapegoat for all this. Perhaps. All right, well thank you both for joining us and talking about this and thank you for watching. For more on this and other issues in China, join us at ntd.tv.